Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and welcome to the end of the year book tag. This was created by my friend Ariel and I recently saw her video for this year and it reignited my love for this tag so I wanted to do my own version of it so let's get right into it and let's talk about all my reading plans for the end of this year which is quickly wrapping up and I cannot believe how fast this year has gone by. So the first question is, are there any books that you started this year that you need to finish? And I have two because I don't necessarily start books and then put them down and forget about them. The only time that I will put down a book that I'm currently reading is if I DNF it and I don't plan on picking it up ever again. So these are two books that I am just currently reading that I am going to finish probably this week. So you might hear about them in the future. And it is Wild Tongues Can't Be Tamed and Writers and Lovers. So Wild Tongues Can't Be Tamed is an anthology by 15 Latin authors living in America and they talk about their experiences being Latin and connecting with their heritage and just talking about what it's like to be Latin in America. And I am reading this for Hispanic Heritage Month. I'm about halfway through it and I'm really enjoying the story so far. I've been underlining some of my favorite passages and I've just been really taking my time with this anthology rather than forcing myself to read it all in one go. So I read a couple of stories whenever I'm free and I've been enjoying that way of consuming an anthology. As for writers and lovers, I am only about 70 pages into the story because I haven't had the time to read and just sit down and consume the story and it is driving me nuts because I am greatly enjoying what the story has to offer and I want to read more of it. I just don't have the time to do it and it makes me so sad. But this follows a 30 year old woman who moves to Massachusetts after the death of her mother and she is pursuing a creative career in writing. So she is deep in the writing world. She is meeting different authors. She is getting into different relationships. She is interacting with her friends and also grieving the death of her mother. I have been really enjoying the story and I just wish I could get deeper into it and I wish I could have more hours in the day because by the time I get off of work I don't have enough time to sit down and read this story and it makes me feel like I'm losing my marbles because I'm in such a big reading mood but I just don't have the time to sit down and read so hopefully this weekend I can read more of writers and lovers and then I can tell you all about it and all my thoughts about it because I am doing a reading vlog for this story so this is a book that I still have to read by the end of the year but it's not like I'm going to put it down and forget about it. I really do want to finish this. Question number two is, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? I do. I have an autumnal TBR that is up now on my channel, and I really enjoyed sharing all the different picks that I have for autumn, and one of the picks in that video is Plain Bad Heroines. This is a sapphic dark academia novel that I am so keen to read as soon as possible. It is dark, it deals with a movie, it deals with a murder mystery, it is all my favorite things in one story, and I think I'm going to greatly enjoy it, and I also haven't heard a lot of thoughts about this story. I've seen so many people haul it and so many people share that they want to read the story but I haven't heard anyone's thoughts about it. So I'm excited to see what I'm going to think about it because nobody's opinions are influencing me so I think that I might really enjoy this story and it's a hunker of a story and it also has like art in it as well and footnotes. It just seems like it's going to be a very complex read and I think I think it's going to be my cup of tea. The next question is, is there a new release that you're still waiting for? I will be completely honest, I have not kept track of new releases at all for 2020. Wait, are we in 2021? Oh my god, oh my god. I have not kept track of new releases for 2021 at all. I kind of have given up on that because I don't read new releases right when they come out and I'll probably read them like years down the road so I have not kept track of new releases. I have no idea what is going to be released in the fall season. I... I'm just, I'm just vibing here. I am just vibing with my books and if a book intrigues me and it came out that week, surprise to me because I did not know about that probably. Long story short, I do not keep track of new releases. I did not do that this year. Last year I did. I was very on top of it, but this year everything is out the window. <laughs> Nothing matters. The next question is, what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Instead of regurgitating my autumn TBR to you, I have three books that are on my physical TBR that I want to read that I have not shown you yet. 
Oh wait, no, I have one from my autumn TBR. So act surprised if you've seen that video before, act surprised. And that book is The Need. The Need is a very short thriller that I want to read. It is about a woman who is home alone with her children. She hears a noise in the night, begins to think that she's losing her mind, but turns out there's someone in her house and they know a lot about her family and her past. And she has to kind of figure out what she's going to do to protect not only herself and her children. I have spoken about this book so many times in different videos that I'm just like so used to regurgitating the synopsis for the story. Again, I'm going to reiterate, this is a lot of very low ratings on Goodreads. I think people went into the story expecting one thing and got a completely different thing out of this story. So I don't really know if I'm going to enjoy this story. I don't know if I'm going to fall into the majority where I think that this book is just a three star read. I don't know if I'm going to really enjoy it. And it might be one of those weird books that nobody likes, but I like, I have no idea. But I'm keen to try this out and get into the spooky mood with this story. So that is one book I want to read by the end of the year. And I most definitely will because it's short, it's quick, it seems like it's right up my alley. I just noticed that all these three books that I have to show you are short and quick because you all know I do not enjoy long books. I think that most of the time they could have been edited down. So here are two other short books that I want to read by the end of the year. And one is The Mad Woman's Ball. This is actually being turned into a movie that I'm very excited about. My friend Josie really enjoyed it, so I'm excited to see how the movie will compare to this book, which is also very short. This follows a woman who was put into a psych ward against her will and a nurse is going to try and help her escape this asylum. It is set in the 1800s and it is translated from French by Frank Wine. I always want to read translated fiction. Translated fiction always seems to jive with me because I enjoy how different countries have different story structures and different topics that they focus on in literature, and this is considered to be dark and gothic, so I'm very excited to read this. And the last book that I want to read by the end of the year is The Tea Dragon Society. This is an adorable graphic novel about a bunch of people who run a tea house with dragons, I believe. I have no idea. I just know it's the cutest freaking thing I've ever seen. I love dragons. I love cozy vibes. I love a hobbity feeling book. And so many people say it's really cute. So I'm excited to sit down one day and read this book in its entirety. And I also love how massive it is. This is my biggest graphic novel I've ever owned. And I think it's adorable. Actually, it says it's a manga. It says it's a manga flavored fairy tale. Just the right length to pair with a cup of tea. That's so cute. I love that. I love that so much. The next question is, is there a book you think could still shock you and become a new favorite book of the year? And I have three books to show you for this question. One is Writers and Lovers by Lily King. This has the possibility to be a five-star read for me because it has some of my favorite things. It deals with someone who has a creative career, it deals with grief, and it deals with someone who doesn't really have their place in life. I love all three of those explorations. I think that melding that all together into one book is fascinating and I've really enjoyed the writing style so far and I cannot wait to read the rest of the book. So I think this has a possibility of being like a four or five star read for me. If it's a five star read for me, it will blow my mind because I think I've only given like two books this year five stars. So this has a lot to compete with. Hopefully it can be a new favorite of mine for this year. Another book that I think can be a five-star read for me is Outline by Rachel Cusk. This is a novel that I picked up completely on a whim. I did not read any reviews for it. I did not see if any of my friends have read it. I just picked it up because it looked cool and the premise seemed really awesome. So this is split into 10 parts and it's 10 conversations that this woman has while she is staying in Athens and she is teaching, I think, creative writing. Yes. This seems like a very meditative, very introspective type of read, and let's read the first line together. Let's just, let's just see what that's like. Before the flight, I was invited for lunch at a London club with a billionaire I'd been promised had liberal credentials. Interesting, intriguing, makes me want to read more. Actually, my Kindle recommended Rachel Cusk's books to me based off of the books I have read this year on Goodreads, so... I saw her in the bookstore and I was like, this seems serendipitous. This seems like a good find. Why not try out a Rachel Cusk book without looking at Goodreads beforehand? Why not form my own opinions for once? And a third book that I think could be a new favorite of mine is The Labyrinth 
of the Spirits by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This is the fourth book in the Cemetery of Forgotten Books series, and it's quite a hunker compared to all the other books that I have on this list that I want to read for the end of the year. I think this is one of my biggest books that I'm probably going to read this year, and it... It just seems like it's going to be a great time. I have honestly no idea what this plot is about. I just know that Carlos Ruiz Zafon is one of my favorite authors of all time because his writing is unlike anything I've ever read before. It's so lyrical and beautiful and effortless. It just feels like a movie in my mind. And I have greatly enjoyed all of his books except um, The Prisoner of Heaven. Did not enjoy that, but I enjoyed The Angels Game and I really enjoyed The Shadow of the Wind, so I think that this book might be a new favorite of mine. Hopefully, if anything, the writing style will inspire me to want to write my own book, and that's all I can ask for in the world. I think we're at the last question. Have you already started making reading plans for the next year? Yes, I do have so many reading plans. One is that I want to read almost all of my books on my physical TBR. I think I have around 35 books that I haven't read in my whole entire book collection, and I think I can read all of those books in 2022. I usually read about 100 books a year, but I think this year I'll probably end up at like 70 books this year, so I think if I were to focus all my time on reading these books physically before reading anything else from my library or on ebook, I think I can finish all of these books and I think it would be so satisfying to only have like five books on my TBR because then it won't be as intimidating, it'll just look pleasing and I can just feel like a superior person, you know? That's one of my main goals for 2022. I know it was a main goal for this year, but I did not read a lot this year due to the fact that it's 2021 and so many things are happening at once, but it's definitely a goal that I want to carry into 2022. Along with that goal, I want to try and read at least 50 books in 2022. I know my reading speed has significantly slowed by like 50% because I don't have as much time to sit down and read physically anymore, so I primarily read through audiobooks. I have to be gentle with myself and remind myself that I'm not going to be able to hit 100 books next year. So a tentative goal that I want to hit next year is read 50 books. If I can read 75, that would be amazing. If I can read 100, that would also be amazing, but it all depends on how much free time I have and the ability to sit down and read without looking at my phone because I've gotten into the bad habit of checking my phone so often. So whenever I read a page, I'm like, let me check my phone. I read two more pages, let me check my phone. I really have to break out of that habit because it's ruining my opportunity to read as much as I can because I keep on scrolling rather than reading and I would much rather be reading than scrolling. So I have to break that compulsive habit to always like pick up my phone and check it. I hate that habit so much. Another goal of mine that I want to do for this channel is do more reading vlogs. I know you guys enjoy my reading vlogs a lot. I really enjoy creating them and editing them. It allows me to be as creative as possible and just kind of have a different vibe for every reading vlog. And I just love the idea of reading vlogs. I love watching them. I love filming, editing them. They're just amazing. So I want to do more reading vlogs. I want to do more weekend reading vlogs and just try and vlog as much as possible in 2022 to give you as many videos as possible because they are just so nice to film and I know you guys really enjoy them and always ask for them. So if you have any like themed reading blogs that you think that I should do, if you have any reading blog ideas or certain things that you really enjoy in vlogs, please put them down below because I would love to take those ideas into account into my future reading vlogs. How many times did I say reading vlog in that clip? How many times? maybe at least 12. And my last reading goal for 2022 is to read more nonfictions about people and topics that interest me. This is something that I've recently started mulling about because I have always been interested in Princess Diana. I always thought that she was such an interesting historical figure that I don't know a lot about because I was not born in the time that she was alive. And I always wanted to learn more about her history and her time in the palace and how she dealt with those different situations. And I thought, Instead of wondering about Princess Diana, why don't you just read a nonfiction about Princess Diana? And I thought, wow, what a concept. So 
In 2022, if there is a historical figure who interests me, a piece of history that interests me, a topic that interests me, I want to try and read a nonfiction about it to gain more insight and gain more knowledge because I'm out of college, I'm not going to take more college classes, and I have to put my own education into my own hands. So if there is something that interests me, I want to be able to read about it. Like I just found a book through my friend Leah about endometriosis that I really want to read because because I want to read not only about endometriosis, but how doctors significantly disbelieve people with endometriosis and they don't take their pain seriously. And I want to read more about that and I want to read more about the biases in medicine and doctors. And I think that's something that's very interesting because I have a lot of different issues that I'm still trying to get diagnosed. And I know those struggles and I think that reading about other people's issues in the medical field will be very validating and will also give me me some insight and knowledge into how I can help myself and advocate for myself as a patient. So again, any topic that interests me, I'm going to try and find a nonfiction for so I can listen to it or read the novel to learn more about different things that have piqued my interest. And I just thought it was a really cool idea and it's a very simple idea as well. Like, of course, like if you want to learn something about it, go read a book. But I just never put the idea into action, so hopefully I can start doing that. And I think it's a really cool idea because it'll help me further my education and my knowledge, and I have done it for true crime and for racism and social issues, but I do want to do it for like historical figures and certain topics that aren't really as popular, like endometriosis. So that's just a goal of mine. I don't know if you would want to hear more about it. If I read a lot more nonfictions, maybe I can do a dedicated nonfiction recommendations video in 2022 once I have a enough titles to share with you all, but that's just an idea that I wanted to share with you. So let me know about your reading goals in 2022. Let me know if there are certain books that you definitely want to pick up next year. Let me know how your reading year is going in this year, if it is good, if it is bad. If you want to connect with me anywhere else on social media, my social media links will be down below. I have TikTok, Instagram, Goodreads, Storygraph, all of that will be linked down below. And if you have made it this far in this video, leave a star emoji for like the end of the year because like, you know, like New Year's, people always like do stars for New Year's. I don't know. Put stars in the comments. I'm, I'm sure it would be cute. And thank you so much for watching and thank you to Ariel for creating this tag. I love it so much and I love doing it every single year. And thank you all for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye.